Good morning. Welcome to Our Lady of Grace Church. We have several announcements this morning. This weekend is the final opportunity to purchase tickets for the dinner dance featuring, featuring the Eric Barchese combo. The event takes place this coming Saturday and includes a catered dinner and a gourmet cookie table. There is also a cash wine and beer bar. This weekend, our special collection will be for the annual Mission Appeal. And the Knights of Columbus are holding their baby bottle campaign today. Please take a baby bottle after Mass and include your donation and return it to the church by the end of this month. Instructions are tagged on each bottle. Please be sure to take a bulletin home as there are many announcements and details. Please silence or turn off all cell phones and pagers in preparation for Mass today. All of our hymns could be found in the green hymnal. Please join in singing our opening hymn, number 439, Praise to the Lord. Please stand. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we gather this day to praise, worship, and adore our God. Let us do so with a spirit of humility and contrition as we now acknowledge our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace, 
Lord have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of Elisha, the man of God. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean of his leprosy. Naaman returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before Elisha and said, Now, I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Please accept a gift from your servant. Elisha replied, As the Lord lives whom I serve, I will not take it. And despite Naaman's urging, he still refused. Naaman said, If you will not accept, please let me, your servant, have two mule loads of earth for I will no longer offer holocaust or sacrifice to any other god except to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Of 
seen salvation by our God. Joyfully sing out all you lands. Break forth in song. All the ends of the earth have seen the power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen the power of A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. Such is my gospel for which I am suffering, even to the point of chains, like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I bear with everything for the sake of those who are chosen so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, together with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, He remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice, and he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith 
has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. As a people of faith, as we come to celebrate Mass this morning, uh, we acknowledge that we have all received God's blessings. The fact that we are alive, the fact that we share human life is itself a gift from God. At one time or another, over the course of our life, I'm sure that we had some injury or some need of healing and because of God's creation and perhaps by the help and handiwork of skilled professionals and doctors, we were restored to health. We give thanks to God for that blessing. We have blessing of our family and so many other ways in which this time of the year in the fall, we take an account of the many varied ways we are blessed. And the word of God today couples the fact that in two cases, the first reading, Naaman, the Syrian, was cleansed of his leprosy, as well as in the gospel where we have ten lepers cured by the Lord. They were physically touched by God and were healed. And in response, they gave thanks to God. You and I as Catholics are not only connected to this parish church, but we are also affiliated and associated with so many institutions that bear the name Catholic. Perhaps over the course of your life in education, uh, you went to a Catholic school or went to a Catholic uh, formation uh, program or went to a hospital that was sponsored by a Catholic institution. So many things in our culture and in our world that bear the name Catholic. In our own uh, neighborhood, we have Seton Hill University, uh, founded by the Sisters of Charity. Uh, and today, as uh, our parish uh, welcomes our mission cooperative appeal, uh, one of the members of that Sisters of Charity is here, uh, someone who is no stranger to our parish, uh, for she was the pastoral minister here uh, some years ago, uh, Sister Betty Stock. And Sister Betty is here to share the story of the Sisters of Charity, a Catholic religious community of women who fulfill their mission uh, as disciples of Jesus, not simply with regard to uh, an institution of higher education or health care or social service and parish ministry, but the Sisters of Charity also extend their uh, their evangelization to areas of this world. And so at this time, I invite Sister Betty to come forward and ask for your attention. Good morning. I'm 10 years older, you'll see. <laughs> How good it is to be here. It's like coming home. I see so many faces that I recognize. But your children, I don't recognize at all. That 10 years <laughs> made a difference. First of all, I'd like to thank Bishop Molesic, Father Carbone of the Mission Office, and Father Dan, of course, <clears throat> for allowing me to come and talk to you about the important topic of missions. <clears throat> Most of you know us well, as Father just said, as educators and nurses, social workers, etc. cetera. Uh, after Vatican II, my community responded to the Pope's request that religious communities consider enlarging their ministries by going to the third world to evangelize. Our first foreign mission was to South Korea. Since 1960, when we first went there, we have established a community. We began accepting women as Sisters of Charity. That province, that community in Korea, 
has itself reached out to other mission territories, to China and to Ecuador. Since we and our sisters in Korea are one congregation, even though we're two provinces, we all accept the responsibility of spreading the kingdom of God in these countries. I might add that by baptism, we are all commissioned to make the Lord known in whatever way we can, either in our day-to-day -day living or in sharing the missionary work on a broader scale. <coughs> Let me give you some background on Ecuador and China. I'm sure you know that there is more to mission work than preaching about Jesus, even though that's the most important thing. In almost every mission territory, the needs of the people are assessed and an attempt is made to help them. The Ecuador mission was a response to a request by an Australian priest and a laywoman who happened to be a Korean nurse. It was through her that our sisters got involved there. And they had established a clinic and a school for children with disabilities. It is in Pedro Carbo in Ecuador where this became a reality. Beside the clinic and the school, they also were asked to minister in the local parish which had 50 mission statements, 50 mission stations, and one pastor. <laughs> Let's hope they've gotten reached that point. 37 sisters volunteered to go to Ecuador. Five were chosen and are now ministering there. They first had to learn to take time to study Spanish so that they can converse with the people. If you know anything about Eastern languages, they're very different from the Romance languages. So they had to learn Spanish, which was a very different from Korean. They arrived there originally in March of 2008. Their work has expanded mainly because of the mission appeals to parishes such as this, who have provided them with much needed equipment and supplies. The clinic was originally started because many mothers were dying in childbirth. Now it has grown and there are more departments to help individuals with other health problems. The clinic provides services to all in the area with dignity and respect. On one occasion, a young man walked for many days to reach the clinic. When he arrived there, he asked for medical help for his village. After receiving a hot meal and a place to sleep, he guided a team of doctors, nurses, and our sisters to a distant village, a village that no one knew was there. Since then, it has been visited on a regular basis. You may have read of recent earthquakes in Ecuador. <clears throat> Our sister had little damage because they were located beyond the epicenter. The doctor in charge of our clinic there, however, asked if there was something they could do for people who were harder hit. They, uh, they identified missions far enough away from the epicenter, but who had lots of damage. So they decided that was where they would go. The sisters and staff gathered what they could and traveled about four and a half hours to a mission statement to help uh, in whatever way they could. They carried with them as many necessary materials as they could. The educational part of Pedro Carbo has developed too. There are a large number of children in the area who are physically and mentally challenged. 
Our sisters had a, a well-developed curriculum in Korea, having staffed two schools there for special children, one of which was for the blind. They therefore could, grow, could draw on their experience. They were able to be involved in a special project for, the, for all those children in that area. The project had two buildings, but they were about a city block away from each other, which created a real problem for children with physical disabilities. For them to get from one building to the other was a real problem. So somebody, some kind soul, decided they needed another building. They built another building closer to the first so that those children would not have to travel so far. And the one they had, they are transforming it into a, a place for uh, parent education and for a working training center for students so they could learn a trade. All this is costly, you can imagine. As I said, our original mission to Korea has become a source of expansion into Ecuador, but also to China. They send sisters to China to open an early education daycare center for children with disabilities. It seems that, that disabilities was things that the sisters there find themselves able to deal with. And so five sisters went to China. They have been recognized for their work in China. The Chinese government has given, has given their work in special education, special awards. They are often asked to go to other areas of China to assist with the development of similar programs and to provide teacher and parent education. Of course, they're not allowed to evangelize. They're not allowed to be called sister. They're not allowed to wear a modified habit or any kind of symbol. But the people there know they are good teachers and they know their children are loved. When we were baptized, we received the mandate to spread the kingdom of God in whatever way we could. This is the one way we can be missionaries ourselves. First of all, we can pray for the missions. Prayer is the source of any work any missionary can do, and they cannot further God's kingdom without the strength of those prayers, their own and others. No matter how great or how little you can share with us monetarily, I can assure you it will help. I want you to consider the gospel today and think of our sisters as those lepers who said, have pity on us. In their names, I thank you for any help you can give. Now, when I do these talks, I always try to find some clever thing at the end, you know, to make people think, oh, that was interesting. Uh, and what I'm going to do is to say thank you in Korean, in Spanish, and in Chinese. I have to tell you, we have sisters visiting us from Korea. One of them was born in China, so she tutored me on how to say this. In Korean, kamsamida. In Spanish, muchas gracias. In Chinese, shahe, shahe. And in good old English, in the name of the sisters and in my own name, God bless you and thank you.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting that the favor of God are never exhausted, we offer to our Lord these prayers of intercession. Our response will be, Lord, hear us. For Pope Francis and all pastoral leaders, may their words and example cultivate thankful and merciful hearts in all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For all civic leaders, may they be blessed with courage and wisdom as they work to solve the problems that plague humankind. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For the chronically ill among us, may they know the merciful love of God through our care and concern for their needs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For those in our faith community who feel called to the priesthood or religious life, May we support and encourage them as they discern God's call for their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For those who put themselves in harm's way to protect, defend, and rescue those in need, may God keep them safe as they carry out their duties and bring them safely home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For those whose lives have been shattered by senseless violence or acts of terrorism, May they experience the healing, compassionate presence of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For all our dearly departed, including Donald Fisher, may they rest in peace and happiness with all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Heavenly Father, look kindly upon the prayers we seek this day. Stir in the hearts of your faithful a desire to spread the Christian message of compassion and mercy. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we present our gifts, please join in singing hymn number 405. How great thou art.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Oh. Are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, 
we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Vincent de Paul, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we are all one under the Heavenly Father. We now pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share a sign of the Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you make us shares in his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Certainly want to thank Sister Betty for joining us and sharing a story of how the Sisters of Charity have taken the seeds of faith and have planted them in the countries of Korea, China, Ecuador. Uh, it is also an opportunity for us as a parish family to also realize that evangelization takes place right in our midst, uh, that the families with children who come to us, uh, who perhaps uh, are uh, coming to a place that they want to celebrate their faith and we don't know them, uh, there are barriers, they're not language barriers, we all speak the same language, but sometimes they look a little differently or we don't know who they are. And I think that we have to remember that it is the Spirit of God that calls us to bind together as one family under our Heavenly Father. So let us as a parish continue to be evangelizers here in Greensburg, in our Catholic faith to always extend a word of welcome to the stranger, to new families, and to make all people belong to the Lord through our parish church, through our mission as disciples of the Lord. And may the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our closing hymn, number 431, Blessed Assurance. <laughs>